Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm Weary Writer. Also joining me is Evgeny. Hello, listeners and, and viewers oh and people who attune to this attune? podcast. Did we go in the Well of Ascension uh, and get attuned to this podcast? I don't think that's how that worked. No, I mean, no, you attune rhythms. Okay, they're listeners. All right, that's, rhythm okay, okay, that's fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're listeners. I have, I have waited so long to, to invite you all into my bedroom where I keep all the best things of my life. They are they're on, on this shelf and some are on don't this shelf. Don't take any of this are... out of context. If you're an audio listener, don't take any of the <laughs> words that Arjun said out of context <laughs> at all. Audio listeners, I have not waited to invite you in my bedroom. I'm sorry. He's this talking about for books. Viewers only. There, there are books behind him and <laughs> nothing else. There's no innuendo there. But yeah, I am I am recording in a different location, which is my bedroom, uh, where I have all my books. And uh, as you can see, I like big books and I cannot lie. I mean, yeah, we, we, we read Stormlight. So, yeah, yeah that makes I mean, sense. That makes true. sense. Mm-hmm. I also have. So I promise not to do like the full show and tell because I have literal drawers of swag I can show off. So we'll save that for another time. Yeah, we but got I have so this, much time. I, I have this uh, like actual leather. Oh, nice. It's not bound, but it's a, like a leather slip case of the Bulgarian Words of Radiance. Oh, nice. Um, and you can see the actual. Cool. Hmm. Book inside. So uh, that's my that's my intro for this episode. Uh, tune in next time where I will show you things in my drawers. <laughs> tune in for the next three years for Argent to do random show and tell because now he is actually uh, in, in where actually he stores all of his crap. Also joining us is Marvin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pedro. Oh yeah, there's more people. And yeah, there. Yeah, there is. From the same room, nothing to show off. Yep. Same as always. <laughs> yep. And I'm Chaos. And what we're going to do today is we are going to talk about words of Brandon because we haven't done one of these in a while. Granted. There really hasn't been events, but there have been a lot of streams. Uh, Because there, yeah, there's Brandon this pandemic been... thing, so there hasn't really been events. Yeah, something something about a, a new plague in the West. Well, it's not just in the West, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it started in the West of us. Which well, I guess applies I mean, to everyone, because if you go yeah. far enough west... <laughs> Everything is west. <laughs> Everything is to the west. East. It east has to, your your theory east had to be in the west because it's closest to honor. <laughs> and when you go far enough west, then you're back at the Shattered Plains. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be built on a my comment. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to talk about 2020 Words of Brandon. We're recording this in August. So... We got uh, a lot of stuff from streams, uh, a few events in the before times. Uh, that's, that's nice. Uh, During the shadow days. Yeah, the shadow days. Uh, it does feel like it's been 10,000 years ago, though. So that's what we're going to do. And yeah, this will be two episodes because we have 23 pages of these in our document <laughs> so you know stay tuned for next time for more of these but- i mean most of that is because these are streams and bread and loves yeah. to talk he does like to talk but uh we'll, we'll, we'll see I, I think there'll be two because before we get into words of brandon brandon sent out another newsletter with another section of prose and it is on Don Shard. And so he sent out the Don Shard prologue. So mm-hmm. we're going to talk about that for a little bit. Spoilers for oh, Don yeah. Shard prologue are, are going to be now for the next longer than we expect because we bought about these a lot. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, so if you're a video, it, well, we have a spoiler warning on screen. If audio, you know. So there. Uh, but I'll put the timestamp. Mm-hmm. In the description. So, Dawnshard Prologue, we got Yob! 
Hey! Y'all lived. Y'all yeah. lived. Shalon maybe kind of thought sh- he might have lived, <laughs> uh, but wasn't I... sure. Yeah, but we were, though. Yeah, but it, it's yeah. just nice to get confirmations for that, because, yeah. like, confirmation on living people is is good, rather than just, like... <laughs> Hey, she just got out of a stressful situation. Maybe I saw a Yalb in the distance. Maybe not. It's like, ah, you're, you could be unreliable. Well, like, no, it's like she did some freaky connection drawing. That is true. But there's also yeah, the sentence a, where he might, she might have saw, seen Yalb. Anyway, he's alive, which is great. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has found a new sh- ship to do shippy things on. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. And and to pull pranks on on people, which is a very Yalb thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, it's definitely after Oathbringer and... because it re- references the Alethi Queen. So it's like yeah. that's it's definitely post Oathbringer. Yeah. And so they are. I was gonna say they fly. They're um, <laughs> they're fly. sailing. They sail the ship. Yes, there's no As ships there's do. no flying. Uh, and they see a ship in the distance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a bit of a character. Uh, moment character characterization right um where yaub is now the so yaub and two others survived the wind's um, pleasure sink yeah they, they were the, the only pleasure yeah. yeah other than like shalan <laughs> and <laughs> yasna um <laughs> yeah except those <laughs> only three people except the other two <laughs> except all the other people <laughs> um but they're not the same. They, they, yeah, so so as sailors do, they they now have this this reputation, right? Uh for having survived this thing and like um they um they approach the other ship, which is not the flying Dutchman. <laughs> it's not the flying they, Dutchman. No. No, no. Mm-hmm. Um it's also not the Jolly Roger. No. Although it would have been funny if Brandon named the novella uh, Pirates of Roshar. Mm. Also, I don't think Jolly Roger is the name of a ship. It's a flag. Yeah. It's, uh... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know things. <laughs> Argent, I don't know things. Look, I... Well, he, he whatever. So, so Yelp has the reputation that's like, oh man, th- that, that other ship looks like a ghost ship and i mean you're from a ghost ship so you you gotta go over there and check it check it out uh and it turns because everybody thinks the wind's pleasure was a ghost ship at this point Mm -hmm. yeah and it it vanished because shallan still cast it into water yep well i mean yeah that's that that is accurate uh Mm -hmm. so turns out the ship that they see is first dreams the ship that we see Mm -hmm. in the kaza interlude uh, that was going to Akana in Amia, and then it just kind of ends. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't think the entire crew of that ship had gone with Kaza and the captain, um, to the island. Like, no, no. no. I, I like. I agree with you. I don't think. Oh, okay. They all were. right. So, so yeah. the, the, there were probably some people like left on the ship mm-hmm. to like guard it and stuff. And Not so the long, people though. who went Not with long, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the people who went with Kaza and the captain and the apparent sleepless cook woman with tattoos who poisons people who approach Akina, um, th- they obviously died, right? Yeah. She took care of them. Uh, did and um, then, the sleepless go with the expedition or did she stay on the ship and follow later? I think she stayed and Kaza just found her on the shore afterwards. Okay, yeah. Like That's she, she, she waited for Casa there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, poisoned them okay. and waited. She, yeah, she, she yeah. poisoned the food. They went there. Uh, the ones who didn't die, which may have been only Casa, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. uh, she killed them and obviously <laughs> killed the rest of the crew. And yeah, must have. Probably just like sent the ship Floating on. in open waters. Mm-hmm. I thought it was. A very cool uh, intro. They're just like connecting things with uh, like Amy yes. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what's interesting? The it. timing is interesting. Yeah. Because like, I don't think a ship without a crew can survive a long time on the shore. 
Yeah, there are these high storm things. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. True. There's also the other storm, right? Yeah, that's there, there's yeah. a lot of storms. And of course, third storm so, and the, the diagonal and, yeah, storm. And, and, yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah. And they also, the ship sailed through that storm around Akina or like that weird storm thing. That oh, so, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the weird storm, storm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so, its name, weird storm. The weird storm rains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't think we know exactly when the Kaza interlude takes place. No. Yeah, so that, that could happen when I, that could but, be post Battle of Thalen Field, really. Yeah. But it could be that for whatever reason the sleepless held on to the ship for a while and then decided <laughs> to like let it loose. Yeah. I don't know. There there's some there are potential timeliney whammy whippity whoppity yeah. chippy things with the time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. but like I'm not I'm not super worried about it. Like even mm-hmm. even if Brandon's like, yeah, actually this ship has been in the open seas for like a month and it's gotten like super lucky. Uh, I I do think a, a ship without people on it might like it might you might just not want to sail through a high storm because it will suck for all the people on the ship. <laughs> but like yeah. if it's just like a hunk of wood floating, it doesn't matter if it spins a couple times yeah i just i'm just imagining like a giant boulder hitting it but like the storm's probably less bad this far west right i i don't know i feel like it would just capsize yeah probably Uh, listeners if you have experience sailing the seven seas (laughs) yes let us know if if a high storm could conceivably mess up a ship without a crew I, I think there's a lot of ways a, a storm can... Uh, if, if there's anything I know that when there's a storm, there's, like, lots of sailors doing lots of things to, like, yeah. keep that thing going. So... Yeah. I don't know what they're doing, they're, but... In the prologue, they are relatively close to the shore, I think, as well. Like, yeah, so not maybe, far maybe out, it's, so. like, got stuck in like a cove or something mm. and then like only recently like got pushed out or something i don't know right yeah, yeah that's that's possible but so questions do we think yob's gonna be in don Chardon more than this um i think i want him to be yeah. a supporting character it's nice to see some supporting I, cast. I would like him to be there i think we're only gonna get like a passing mention of him mm-hmm. um from like Risen's point of view or whatever. Like maybe think... maybe they they quote unquote capture the ship and bring it back to Thalena and mm-hmm. the reason is like, oh that's interesting. This ship something something Amia something Akina, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I can just see it that in a novella you have less time to build characters. Yeah. So it's like being able to use characters that have already been somewhat fleshed out in the main series Mm -hmm. rather than just like here's these five new sailor people like here's y'all that you you already kind of know like i don't have to spend a lot of time like building his character he can just do y'all be things (laughs) yeah i don't think sailor spren are real lots of people in discord were like is sailor spren real i'm like that no, I don't think so. No, that was, it's y'all either. playing a trick. But, yeah. but if they yeah. were, I wonder what they would look like. Like they would have to be total abominations because every sailor thinks they see something else. So maybe it's, it, w- it would be cool to see that, but I don't think they're real either. Yeah, yeah, I I like that idea. The idea that all the sailors imagine like different things, and mm-hmm. so all the spren are like a combination of all sure. those different things, right? Right. Sure. Sure. Uh, sure. Or maybe, or maybe they transitioned kind of like how uh, creativity spren was it creation spren or creativity yeah. spren? Creation spren. Creation spren. Right. Yeah. How how they like cycle through different mm-hmm. objects? Maybe sailor mm-hmm. spren do exist, and they also cycle through like different uh, sea monsters or whatever. <laughs> I, I just think that it, it was clear from Yald's perspective that he didn't think Sea yeah. Aspirin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's but just I, I think it would be a. a it would, so I don't understand how he's trolling, by the way. 
but I agree that he thinks he is. It would be interesting to see, like, to open up with, oh, haha, joke, sailor's friend, haha, not Rio. I made some money off of this guy. And then throughout the course of the novella, ta da, sailor's friend. The sailor's friend were the sleepless all along, somehow. Sure. <laughs> They're the dawn shards. <laughs> They're the dawn shards, actually. Sure. <laughs> I am on board with all kinds of nonsense when Wait, it comes the to the unmade or sailor's yeah. friend. <laughs> sure easy like, nailed it hey un, like abominations you said it yourself arjun yeah no no no. the sailors on the infinite sea were sailors friend all along <laughs> <laughs> people are like what are you talking about we're talking about the 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 thing from the pooly interlude grace grace really likes talking about that so it's it's oh ah, yes the, it's very the much good old pool interlude. grace couldn't be, be here fair, today she's, she's we actually have seen sailors friend before yeah, an oath ringer. Like, sailing, like, the reachers, friend, like yeah. Nodom, oh. like oh, the 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 Miss Friend, boo, the Miss yeah. Friend, boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with Eric on this one, boo. boo. Uh, anything else on the the prologue? Any uh, any uh, speculation we can do? I mean, it was pretty short, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it was a teaser. I like seeing y'all. Yeah. It was a fun teaser. Yeah, I, cool. Rissen, Lopen, and Yalb go to Amia. <laughs> like, I'm kind of into that. That's how, like, Yalb and Lopen being together, uh, trolling each other. That sounds great, actually. I don't know. It's like, okay, but they, consider Lopen just nopes out. <laughs> I don't know how Lopen's going to be involved. That's the thing. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, I'll say this much. If you have ever wondered what value editors bring to a book <laughs> yeah. this prologue is a good example oh, if, yeah. so if, you, if you've read the prologue and have been like wait a moment this sentence doesn't make sense there are missing words here that's why editors exist <laughs> uh this is <laughs> just brandon splurging words on a page yeah like he's, he's just throwing the words and the ideas on the page he's not worrying about like uh, uh, I was gonna say tempo. He's not worrying about pacing too much. He's not worrying about like getting the words correct or the like the sentence. Like he's not doing. He's just throwing the I ideas. I want to get the characters to work. That's all I care about. And it's like, hey, yeah, Yelp's great. I'm that. That's fun to see a Yelp perspective. <laughs> And Yelp, don't send Yelp. them an email. Don't send them an email pointing out all the mistakes because yeah, <laughs> the we we didn't make a typo thread for for a reason because uh this 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 <laughs> did Peter even see this? I I don't even know. He had technically uh, seen it, but in, no in feedback writing, okay. had been incorporated as of oh great. So we are done with Donchard. Let's get into some wobs for wobs. Most of these are from live streams, uh, but there there are a few events. So let's let's just get right on into it. What do we got? Okay. So this first one is from Kim Jensen, who asked, "Does Hoyd have any rules, self-imposed or otherwise, about how much he can interfere with what is going on on whatever planet he is currently on, and why does he take such an active part on Roshar compared to the other planets he has visited?" It's a good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to which Brandon answered, Hoyd has a few rules of thumb, but he does not have the same rules that the shards have to follow, which is basically one of the big points that made Hoyd do what he does. He has to watch out, because drawing their attention at the wrong time can be very dangerous. But that's not necessarily a rule. It's more of a be careful. He's defined by the fact that he doesn't have to follow the rules. And he's also defined by the fact that he intervenes when a lot of others think that one should not intervene, as made ev evident by the chastisement he receives from Frost. So I'd say no and yes. There are some weird limitations on him relating to things in his past that you'll find out about eventually, but those are not really about intervening. Why Roshar more than others? There are a couple reasons for this. One is... The way he is intervening on Roshar is something that is directly involving the main characters of the book I'm writing. He actually has done a lot on other planets as well. We just haven't seen it because he was, hasn't been involved with the main characters. Why is he involved with the main characters? Well, he is trying to become a Knight's Radiant. 
and he wants to be involved with the people who are becoming Knights Radiant because he wants to figure out how the magic works and specifically how you can get off world with it, which is the real trick on Roshar. So he, in this specific instance, is really involved with those characters because of that reason. A lot of the other places he will go, the magic is already extant and it's not like Roshar where the magic has not been around for a while. So he's kind of by necessity more involved in the plot. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't think much of this is like groundbreaking, but it's it's a lot of interesting minor characterization. Um, it's nice having it all laid out yeah. for yeah. us. It's yep. nice having like, Oh yeah, that totally makes sense that Hoyt would be more involved on Rosh. It's like, oh, him collecting magic systems and stuff? No way. Yeah, he does want to do that. Mm-hmm. So this makes a lot of sense. It's like, hey, the Radiants are coming back. I'm gonna be involved a lot. Mm-hmm. Idiots. I want some of that. Yep. Yeah. But it so, it also makes me question why Hoyt didn't go to Rosha before the Rexians. Or why he or why he didn't try to get the magic back then i was also went about to ask that like why didn't he do it before like thousands of years ago (laughs) well he has we we know he was on rosha because yeah the the stories with rock and the horn eaters right no but like why didn't he become a knight's radiant then that i Mm, so the desolations were going on around that time like there's a desolation a going on right now. <laughs> well, yeah, but like he he arrived to Roshar before that happened. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This so, is very interesting. Like when Hoyd went to Roshar uh, initially, because like mm-hmm. he obviously knew the heralds, right? The heralds mm-hmm. recognize him, so mm-hmm. he was clearly there way long ago right and he also recognized one of the fused in yeah. the Oathbringer oh, yep, 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 yep. because he danced with her yeah <laughs> that's right yeah uh which is yeah so like he clearly was around in that time where ashen was destroyed and then like that probably at least that first desolation time me period mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. I feel like he would be there, which is crazy to think that we would get flashbacks and see Hoyt again in Herald flashbacks. Oh, I, I have never even thought about that. Like, it's, it's, oh, it's totally bizarre. possible, right? Like, that's legit yeah. like a thing that we probably will see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, get, a, we get a flashback and, and Shalash is like, oh, hey, it's Medius. Yeah, hey, how's it going? It's like, oh, hey, how's it going? I'd love to see Hoyt not be quite as adept then yet because like, yeah. he hasn't had as much time so it would yeah. be really cool to see him oh yeah. that's really cool if it <laughs> was around that first desolation period like it's not clear but the radiance didn't exist then there were mm-hmm. at least some that's desolations right. without radiance right yeah pretty sure yeah uh mm-hmm. and then no hadan and then you know then the radiance existed and then mm-hmm. formal silver kingdoms i guess right yeah so so he may have noped out before the radians were a thing. I mean, and probably like Odium didn't want him there either. So he said, "Okay, I'll come back later, maybe." And, and yeah. like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but maybe just the timing didn't work out. Like maybe mm. he came. It does sound like the time period between the last desolation and the false desolation would have been a good time to do it but but also yeah. the other thing is maybe hoyd intentionally didn't get a spren bond at that point or seek one out because he didn't know how to go off world and like yeah. now he like has a plan you know because obviously he goes off world in air two like we see him in air two so he figures it out pretty quick yes but he pro- unless, unless he, he severs the bond oh mm-hmm. Yeah, but he or likes is forced so to abandon the spren. Yeah. yeah. He lo- he really likes proper light weaving. So mm-hmm. it, it could just be as simple as yeah, that would be great and that's on my to-do list. <laughs> but I don't know how to leave and I kind of like going to other places. And I don't want to be stuck on Roshar where Odium's like <laughs> here all the time. It's like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense that you probably don't want this." You know? 
Yeah. So that's probably my theory. And in addition to maybe the timing didn't work out. But he's probably been on Roshar many, many, many times, right? <laughs> probably. Com- comes back every now and then, checks on mm. the state of the the spiritual merging of transformative cognitive aspects. I just want to know like what his relationship is with like honor and cultivation, how that's changed over the years, right? Because I don't think cultivation likes him. No, it yeah, definitely yeah. doesn't no. sound like it. <laughs> but like how does honor feel, right? And and all that stuff. And also just in the swab about like, oh, he's he's done lots of things on other planets. You just didn't see it. I was like, I wanna know. I wanna know. What did he do? Boy Give me- parallel novel win. Mm-hmm. But he so- got beaten up by Ferricus, so <laughs> Yeah, he got beaten yeah. up by Ferricus. Give me, give me the story of the story of Hoy just going to to Terrace and the Ferro chemistry like, no. No. <laughs> They're just like, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> See, this is why him having advanced light weaving will just make his job so much easier now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much easier. Let's do the next one. All right. Uh, so following up with another live stream question, Coach Dorax asks, did you write MRM as an opposite of Dalinar or was he simply a bad guy meant to spur Kaladin? Uh, and then Brandon, in a typical Brandon fashion, goes and blabs about stuff. Yep. Um, uh, about how Amaram represents kind of the corrupt side of the Alethi. Um, all talk, very little heart. Uh, about issues with the Alethi culture in general and kind of the glorification of the light eyes and the, the lies people were telling both each other and themselves. Uh, And then at the end of all of this, uh, he goes and says, um, when he makes his decision in book one in the flashbacks, he is making a decision that is Amaram. And the decision being like the, the the decision to kill off the rest of Kaladin's squad and take the shards. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a moment where he's considering by the time you're seeing him in later books, that decision has taken him down a path that leaves him very far from any sort of redemption. But it was a choice. And he wasn't just corrupt from the get-go. But yeah, he represents what I feel would be bad about a lethy society, a kind of honor society that is more about looking honorable than being. That, that's an interesting meta thing, because like Sadius and Amaram that that's all what they're about, right? Like it's it's yeah. kind of insufferable yeah. in a way, right? I I wouldn't even say Sadius cares about looking honorable. Well, but he he'll like say it's like, oh, I had to retreat, I had to leave Dalinar there, right? Yeah. And, and th- yeah. there was this like pretense, even though everyone knew what was going on, right? Mm-hmm. But he still felt yeah. the need to like appear as like, oh man, terrible things. It sucks that I had to leave Dalinar there. There was no <laughs> other way. And then it's like Dalinar yeah. comes back. It's like, oh crap. You know? Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's what, what I was Sidious, thinking. Sidious, like nominally cares about the appearance, whereas right. Amaram like actually cared about Yeah, that, that is certainly true. It, it is different for those two, for sure. Yeah. I've always liked MRM to an extent. Uh like I've I've always found his so his like flashback arc, uh, which obviously we we get to see like a glimpse or two at most, mm-hmm. um, has always been very compelling to me. Maybe because I'm projecting, maybe because I'm applying a headcanon <laughs> to this. But I've always <laughs> come on, who who hasn't killed a person or three for a couple of shards? Um I've always liked the idea that he is Truly conflicted. Call the police at nine nine one one. On our <laughs> <laughs> if you're a cop, please I, ping at the... Argent. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't ping. <laughs> That's the worst. Um, I, I have liked the idea that at, at that moment, yes, he is making a decision, and like he doesn't want to kill these people but he genuinely believes that something big and something bad is coming. Um, now, considering his mm-hmm. membership in the 
Sons of Honor yep. and the, what they're doing. Yep. Uh, yes, he would know that something bad is coming because he's bringing it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. But like, he, he goes, okay, well, who is better suited to protect Alethkar and Roshar against this terrible storm that is coming? Is this this bridge man who is a squad leader and a decent soldier, or is it me, the person who was trained for months, years, however long it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it sucks that I need to do this, but also I kind of feel like I'm doing it for it, like it, it's, destination before journey. Yeah, it's all destination before journey, right? Like that's that's mm-hmm. the entire yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah. and I, and I I like these kind of characters. I like characters who are like who want to do what they think is the right thing, but they do it for the wrong reasons. Yep, I just. You know, wish we saw more about what he's doing in other times. <laughs> it's like, that's yeah. still a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a one eighty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he goes from anti villain to full on villain, and it's to villain. Yeah, <laughs> crystal not fun. explained well. No, it is not. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I and certainly, man, the Alethi are not necessarily great guys, even though we uh, mm-hmm. see a lot of them, but there it's a very interesting culture in that we get to see good people in that culture and very bad people in that Mm -hmm. culture helps it not become a caricature yeah 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 so this next question also is from one of the live streams and adam who's uh brandon's publicist in case you don't know who's sort of asking these questions on behalf of the community Uh, he had a question of his own and uh, he was asking uh, i'm assuming that a shard bearer can sever their own soul right if they were to step themselves and Brandon answered, yeah, yeah, they could sever their own soul. So, okay. Makes Gotta sense. be yeah. careful with your sharp blades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is, it is interesting in the sense that it appears the shard blades are just magical artifacts. There's no intent being applied to their ability to cut stuff. Mm, true yeah yes so they they work like machines in that way yeah yeah you have to intend to summon them but once they're summoned they just do their thing they just do their thing yeah Yeah. that Mm -hmm. it actually makes me wonder why we don't see some light eye invalid who has severed his own arm accidentally because like that could totally happen by accident well i think it's harder to do with such a giant sword rather than like a lightsaber like a lightsaber (laughs) it's like oh yeah i'm only having this and it's a beam right like the the shard blades do have weight and things it's like Mm -hmm. a giant thing but yeah i i imagine if you uh mess up with a shard blade uh you're (laughs) you're usually dead uh you don't get to mess up again yeah, I mean, you could you could pr- sever one of your arms, right? At least deaden it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I, I imagine like they they train a lot in like specifically like shard bear yeah uh, mm-hmm. stances, mm-hmm. and they so the, and, and I imagine those they have the guards, the guards mm-hmm. when training, and yeah. they have the guards, yeah. So like while you're training, you're not gonna cut yourself, and I imagine like a lot of the stances are. Like obviously, we've seen very little of them, and we know very little of them. But I imagine they are, they work in such a way so that you're not like flipping the shard blade like behind your back and like between what? you your, don't your want torso prequel, and... you don't want prequel style like uh, shard blade juggling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I imagine they're very like you're either keeping the blade parallel to your body or you're like extending it far away. So like. Even even if the opponent bounces the blade a little bit, um, it's nowhere near your yeah, yeah, yeah. your self. And and a lot of time they're going to be in shard play anyway. Yeah, which helps. So. I don't know about a lot of the time. Yeah, it, it, full shard full, bears. Full are shard little, bears are rare, but like you know, certainly helps. I, I imagine all of that <laughs> is involved there. Timberwolves asks. Does the term bright lord slash brightness have anything to do with eye color, or is it related to the fact that money and artificial light are synonymous? I found that very interesting because I'm just so used to that, you know, coming from the radiance, right? And Brandon (laughs) says, yes, the problem here answering this 
Does it have only to do with eye color? No, of course not. But eye color and the fact that money glows are both things that have been themes in Vorn culture for thousands of years now. And because of that, the two are closely interlinked and it would be hard to pick which one is causing this and pull the other one out. So it is both. If you would ask an Alethi, they would probably say it has more to do with eye color. But culturally, the fact that money glows is just really deeply embedded into the way they think about light and the way they think about wealth and that sort of thing. I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I love these kind of like culture wob or like <laughs> bits of culture and world building that we get every now and then. Yeah. And sometimes they're in the book, but like every now and then we would get Brandon to talk about this, this thing that he's obviously thought about um, and, and just hasn't had a good, like, how are you going to put this in a book? Right. Uh, maybe, maybe you can give a character like an internal monologue where they're like, Hey, why, why do we call people? Like, why do we address people as bright lady or bright Lord? Right. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they can go off on a little bit of that, but it's, it's rare. <laughs> For some reason, this connects with me as to why Shadesmar on Roshar uh, is like beads. Because, like, Skadriel doesn't look like that, right? Like, why is it beads and, like, yeah. spheres? I just, I just like, feel like spheres are connected with that in some way. It's not about it's the actually, eyes glowing, but... It's actually because spheres are the most symmetrical thing. And so they have to hey. be spheres. Boo. <laughs> Boo. The holiest of shapes. I don't think they're perfect yeah. spheres. Perfect spheres are very hard to do. Yeah. Um, but, like, why does Shadesmar look different in different places, right? Like, yeah. there, there are cognitive -y weird reasons, right? So, mm -hmm. they are. I did ask Brandon uh, at one point whether somebody with, like, a very good knowledge of a specific world and the cultures on that world would be able to, like, deduce what shades more looks like there um i mean the answer was kind of but but yes yeah mm -hmm. cognitive so, mumbo jumbo <laughs> it's, it is unfortunately <laughs> yeah it's because brandon thought it looked cool um but yeah yeah i mean ultimately yeah um Obviously, he's going to try to find justification for that. Like on schedule, I imagine it's going to be something along the lines of, well, the mists are yeah. a dominant thing yeah, in the yeah. culture of all like people on, on schedule. So, yeah, spheres are not something people think so much about on Roshar. Like, is, is the well, think about the sure, US but cognitive realm dollar bills? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, when you put it like that, but like, Scro Scrooge. Infuse the was spheres. <laughs> well, this also made me realize is that like spheres are ubiquitous in in Shosha as the currency. Yeah. Like we don't see yeah. different currencies across the countries, and that's like it's actually it's odd. But like, really, it's yeah. interesting. <clears throat> yeah, maybe there's like makes one whether Shinova actually oh, yeah, whether they use spheres because. Good question. I think they still do. Interesting, because I was going to say yeah. no. Interesting. The problem is that we don't see them trading with we are like we don't That's see the money true. exchange in the risen interlude. So do they just well, exchange do they, goods? Do they, like they, they, they give they exchange goods. They don't buy and sell yeah. stuff. So it could be a barter system. Just, yeah, they have, yeah could be. Yeah. I I think, but I. <sighs> <laughs> I don't think they would have an alternative currency. It's either spheres or bartering, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't think they would have coins. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. No. Because so of the way they view thought, metal yeah. stone and mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. <sighs> go to go to the shin mines. <laughs> like no. That's not that's not a thing. <laughs> they would not do that. Interesting. Also, this is like completely unrelated to this episode. Great. But I just remembered again that <laughs> um, they apparently have like either no spren in Shinovar or they or they're very mm -hmm. few or they yes. don't manifest there. Yeah, and that's really weird. Shinovar, it is. It's weird. We got to go there in like detail. We need to mm -hmm. do that. It's not this book. If if Zeth can like hurry up on his crusade thing, please. that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, that's book five stuff with Zeth 
you know being the main character it's probably and like stuff, yeah. combined mm-hmm. with like zeth flashbacks you know we'll we'll see shinovar so this uh next one is about how th- I'm just going to summarize this one but th- they would like to do a picture book similar to isaac's uh monsters don't wear underpants <laughs> book mm-hmm. but for the girl who looked up which is very exciting and as of then they were looking for sometime in 2021 we'll see if that works out cool. <laughs> um and brendan then mentions that book four of stormlight also has a a hoid story that would work as a picture book cool so it'll be interesting to see that one love it I like how Brandon um, phrased it as "I've warned Isaac." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess it, this this one was in January, so it's like right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Isaac wouldn't yeah. have read it yet. Ooh, cool! I I would love to see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then we get to LTUE 2020 in the before times of February, Fe- <laughs> February fifteenth, and everything. Yeah. Remember, remember Fe- mid February. Those were good times. <laughs> I, I I do remember mid February. Oh. remember when when there were other people around us? Yeah, yeah. we could so see and oftentimes <laughs> smell really the ago. flesh of others. Okay, all right, great. Moving on. Let's segue <laughs> way right past segue that. way way past that. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, a question from. Latui, uh, twenty twenty. No, <laughs> Latu. That's not how we, you you just spelled out. That's that's how you pronounce <laughs> it. L <laughs> two. Yeah, that's not, um, that's it. Uh, question: Did whoever wrote the Way of Kings have access or exposure to biochromatic breath? So that is the in-world Way of mm. Kings. Uh, there was a scene, chapter twenty-six. Uh, it could just be speaking of candles and breath, but the way you wrote it made it seem like there's some connection. Um, and Brandon just says, there has been long-standing travel between those two planets. That's a great Brandon response there. <laughs> <laughs> but like we, we've seen examples of that because of yeah. Vasher and the yep. other five scholars. Yeah, so at least or- 300 years before Warbreaker, we had to travel. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That, that's not telling us much, but it's, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. So, well, so no. Okay. So it, it's telling us a little bit, like it's telling us that it's not like Vasher and however many of the other scholars went with him to Rashar are not like a one-off exception. Yeah. yeah. Like there's yes. a, right. there's a moderately steady traffic between Nalthus and Rashar. Mm-hmm. So I got to have the customs. Direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. have customs. Yeah. Gotta have the Nalthian customs. <laughs> uh, you go go read, read Warbreaker. Look for gems. Look for gems. <laughs> I just want to know about like the hidden world hopper economic system in the mm-hmm. Cosmere. Because yeah. it's not like most mm-hmm. of these planets actively know there there are other worlds out there, but there's still a whole bunch of contact between them all. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is funny though, right? I'm just thinking like how countries typically like oh a new country we should send like an official envoy right and mm-hmm. things like that and like that doesn't really happen it's just kind of difficult it's a lot of, like oh. not even like shadow government stuff is just secret mm-hmm. organizations yeah. on top of secret organizations right yeah i guess secret organizations <laughs> are like yeah you know well we know what's going on these idiots don't like regular governments so we'll not tell them if we can get rich yeah that sounds about right <laughs> Okay, uh, the next question is, can you become a Nightblood Savant? And Brent answered, no, I don't think that would work. Just the way that think, things are working, probably not, whether Nightblood is a Savant or not. But you probably could not become a Savant of Nightblood. Yeah, that Which, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. I think like, becoming, becoming a Savant of Nightblood Night is Savant? death. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can <laughs> do that. Becoming yeah. the ultimate destruction of evil. 
I mean, a savant, the magic is suffusing yeah. you, right? And is changing you. <laughs> and it's changing you to be dead. <laughs> that's, that's what it but is. It does, yeah. hmm. But it's also interesting, like, whether Nightblood is savant or not, like, how does it work? What is a savant? Is <laughs> okay. yeah. I, don't, I don't want to dig into that. Like, yeah, yeah, it just seems weird. Yeah, we... especially like right now where it's like, we don't really understand what savantism is because Brandon keeps changing his mind. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we, we only have, we, we're trying to make this two episodes. I don't want to <laughs> dig into night yeah, and no. savants and just, yeah. Yeah. Well, just I mean, we're on page four, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, Eric, why don't you, why don't yep. you talk to us about aluminum? <laughs> Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. This question, there's two questioners uh, talking with Brandon here. Questioner one, does aluminum actually make the metals disappear like be metabolized or does it just cut the spiritual connection? Brandon, so I haven't actually canonized that. I've gone back and forth. For a while, I said it got rid of them. And there may even be, but the more I thought about that, the more it doesn't make much sense. The questioner says, it doesn't, especially the way Duralman works. It doesn't really make sense. Brandon. And so I've been kind of pushing the other way. Since I haven't said it in World, it's not truly canon, but I believe I've answered other fans saying that it burns them all away in a flash, and we might need to do that for future things. So I'm undecided. And then questioner two says, it needs to get rid of them, but a path to sever the connection at the same time. Brandon. One of the big problems is if it only suffers the connection and leaves the metals, then you have heavy metal poisoning from some of the metals. <laughs> and then the yep. questioner says, but if it makes them burn away, that doesn't work the same way as Duralman. Duralman only burns the ones you're burning. Brandon, yeah. So I kind of have to err back on the side of it gets rid of them just so we don't have to deal with metal poisoning but i've also been wavering a little bit thinking is there a better way to explain this so there you go uh brandon doesn't know he's he's <laughs> we'll see yeah uh probably a nice reminder that sometimes theorizing about stuff that is not fully explained in the books is not super productive because Brandon hasn't decided on what the answer is going to be. The, mm -hmm. the more I think about it, the more Brandon like goes rule of cool, justify it <laughs> yeah. with other mumbo jumbo things. Especially where aluminum yeah. is concerned. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. Especially that. <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. Uh, so, yeah, it is kind of weird. Aluminum in mm -hmm. Alamancy, though, because it actually does something. Yeah, that that I mean, and and ferrochemy as well, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it it it's always bothered me a little bit that the metal that is that is inert to investiture is just like, yeah, no, I I'm actually not JK. Well, technically, <laughs> it's just a key to access preservation's mm -hmm. power here. So, but it's I think it's like away. <laughs> the metallic arts are a specific loophole in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> we have we yeah. have a crazy thing about metal in this uh oh we're, we're we're not we're not too far away oh man i'm i read this and i was like what the crap is going on we're just a few wobs away so we'll we'll talk about metal in just a second this next one is one of the ones i find the most crazy in this entire document <laughs> and i had forgotten about it uh, until yeah. i was reading ahead of okay which which is the next one I'm going to read out. Okay. I so, yeah. This questioner asks Calamity from the Reckoners series. Is there any connection between him and the Delvers from Starsight? Brandon. Yes. Very, very loose connection, but there is a connection <laughs> to which the kid questioner asks, like, okay, because I was like, they both come from the dark nowhere, quiet. They hate people and everything. There's a connection. Brandon, there is a connection. An apocalypse guard was kind of supposed to bridge between these things, but it didn't end up coming out. 
and it may not even be a r- bridge when it, we finally revise it <laughs> because we have to make the book good rather than worrying about that. But it was supposed to, to kind of do that. It's going to work well if I can fix the ending. I've just got to fix the ending. So that makes me think, Delt, like, that it's in the overall Reckoner's multiverse thing? The I Reckoners guess. Is, mm-hmm. is everything. Cytoverse? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is Cytoverse Reckoners? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, I mean, well, in this, it's like Brandon intended there to be there, but it's not really canonical mm-hmm. yet. So oh, I, yeah. I just want to know more about Calamity because <laughs> we have yeah. no idea what is going on. So I know that the Apocalypse Guard was going to shed some light on Calamity. Yes. Like that was that was always going to be the plan. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, with with the whole like mo- like parallel universes and, and multiverse and stuff like that. But Delvers? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I don't I don't like like I, I will be mildly upset if the side of verse ends up being like one of the many parallel multiverse sure, realities of the Reconverse. Like Brennan's like I, I I can't do multiverse for Cosmere, but I was like, oh, I'll do this other thing. Everything's connected. <laughs> Legion in perfect state, sure, why not? It's it could be in that, that multiverse too. Oh. Fun. Yay. But like I, I could see calamity as a Delver, sort of, but like it, it's like if a Delver like decided to just be born as a human, which is weird. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> I think we'll have to see. Let, let, let's use <laughs> yeah. a wait and see approach until we figure out what the hell uh, Apocalypse Guard is uh, yeah. going to be. I mean, we're going to learn more about the database as well. And oh, yeah. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then Calamity appears and is like, hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, we, we, we are going to find out we during, like, find. yeah, Delver Flight School. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three. yeah, that's right. One of them is just named Larsener. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny. Be gone. That'd be, be really gone. funny. I kind of Speaking want that to happen. Things. So, no. I'm sending no. an email to Brandon. No, don't do <laughs> I hate everything. This is a totally solid idea, Brandon. Delver Flight School. <laughs> one of the people in the flight school is named Larsener. It turns out to be a Delver that's also uh, a calamity epic thing. That's what they're called. I will. I will save us all from let's, this let's conversation. Let's do the next one. And, the next one is segue away, yes. the next one is so interesting to me. This is this okay. one blew my mind reading this. Okay, what? well, I I haven't read it, so I will be excited. Uh, question about aluminum: Why does it affect other forms of investiture? Yep. Which I dare say is an excellent question. It is a very good question. Uh, and Brent says, when I was building the Cosmere, I just had to build certain themes into it. And metal was one of those. And the metals have kind of spiritual integrity <laughs> and spiritual component that if I can get into Dragon Steel explaining why, you'll get your kind of origins. Um, and then the questioner continues. And that's why in Warbreaker, metals are different with Awakening and stuff. And Brandon follows with, and even in Roshar, the cages that you're building for Fabrios, once you start to figure out how those metals affect it, you'll be like, oh, wait, that makes sense. And these are just across the Cosmere. And if you want an in-world answer, it has to do with stuff in Dragonsteel. But really, the answer is, I was building this and I'm like, I just want this to be a theme. So I'm just going to give this spiritual component to metals. So it works in Mistborn, and it works all across everything. Spiritual integrity to an ob- Sure, sure, why not? <laughs> why not? I mean, that sort of explains in a realmatic sense why Shard, at least Ruin and Preservation, can't see metals, I guess. Mm. And that could just be... Comp- and why... 
for every shard. And, and why investiture manifests as metal in, in like solid. shard blades. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. In, in fact, I think Brandon has kind of said, hey, you can you can refer to the metal that makes up shard blades as kind of like Tanavastium. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Although, don't take that as canon. <laughs> yeah, we still might get like Onarium. No. No. <laughs> Odiumium. Odiumium. <laughs> the, the breakfast for shards. Odium. <laughs> What's up with dragon steel? Let's let's. We know very little know, about it, uh, except me, who totally hasn't read it. Uh, but um... <laughs> that, that, are we that, talking about dragon I mean, steel, the book, or dragon steel? I'm talking yeah, about why, like, like dragon steel's like, oh, there's an in-world reason why metals have a spiritual component. It has to do with dragon steel. I'm like, what? I mean, uh, we do have the metal uh, dragon steel. Well, yeah, in Dragon Steel, and so yeah. it has always had has had a an importance. I feel yeah. like that's maybe like well, but so why? I, mm. I I guess I mean if if we talk about this much more, we are going to turn this into Dragon Steel Metal podcast. Yep. Um, but some of the some of the important questions here are: Was aluminum? important in the Cosmere before the shattering. I think that's very important. Yep, that's another, that's, yep, yeah. And then the other big question was, were the other metals, um, steel, pewter, zinc, brass, duralumin, also important in the Cosmere before the shattering? Right. Right. Because mm-hmm. I, can, I can imagine a world, uh, call it Cosmere, if you will, mm-hmm. where... <laughs> Metal was not all that significant pre-shattering, but something in the act of the shattering of Adonalsium made metal important. Um, Is that a there, there, there is... <laughs> it's like we're, we're, we're doing this dramatic event, splitting this. It's like, yeah, hey, let's just have this stuff about metal. It's like, no, no, I really like metal. <laughs> It's like it's really important <laughs> to me that metal's important. It's like that's happening mid shattering. Like, like imagine, okay, imagine for for whatever reason, uh, the weapon that shattered oh, Adonalsium. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the weapon mm-hmm. was was made of different metals or whatever, or uh-huh. like they shattered Adonalsium in like full aluminum um, shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again. I don't want to say that, but but like <laughs> I will. <laughs> I can I can imagine a scenario where in the act of shattering Adonalsium, like the power that went out, maybe there was like a spiritual explosion or just investiture explosion or whatever. And it like and at this point I'm just saying words, but it like capital C connected <laughs> with all the different yeah, sure. metals. Yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and sure. therefore connected with the spiritual ideal of, of metal. steel or iron yeah, or sure. zinc or yeah. duralumin. Yeah. And made those things like there's so much Brandon can spin about this thing. It's really, it's, I hate that so much. Actually, <laughs> Dragon Steel, like Dragon it. Steel will just be the story of the metal band that all the vessels were members of, and that's why. Sure. Ah, oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yep. It's like metal sixteen. Um, sixteen of them, of course. <laughs> like maybe metal it, did it, not it, exist before the shattering, and it was just Dragon Steel, and Dragon Steel shattered into different metal I mean, types. Metal has to exist if you have planets exist. Yeah, it's like <laughs> humans could not exist without metal. Like you like it's an important if nutrient. Like most have natural lots of elements are considered metals. It's, like, it's either gas or so, like a metal. Yeah. So another interesting question is like why like those specific 16 metals for mm-hmm. because it's not like silver isn't in there. Which is like that, like that's weird from like Earth Vanity. human perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't also think the weird. shattering had anything to do with yeah, making metal but, important in any we, way. Like I don't think. Do like, this, mm-hmm. Yeah, Go on. yeah, yeah. It's like either metal was always important, but or like the formation of the metallic arts, like 
is a more plausible explanation for that than the shattering for me. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it it, it I, definitely sounds I, crazy to me, though. I think there's a lot of nonsense that Brandon can just... That's yeah. the, the biggest with. spiritual bumbo jumbo event in the Cosmere, really. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so let's get on to the next question, which is uh, talking about Warbreaker. And the questioner sa first says, well, they loved Warbreaker so much, and it's one of their favorites. The only problem I had was the end was a little abrupt with Siri and Susbron. Do you know, will you have a novella or understand more <clears throat> what happens after that? And Brandon answered, so uh, when I write the sequel, I will make sure that I include some stuff. The sequel isn't about them. It's about Vivenna, but it will at least indicate what's going on with them. The whole ending was just a little bit abrupt on that one. It was, <clears throat> it was more of a discovery written book than many of my others. But yeah, that is one of the, its kind of drawbacks in is that ending. And the question um, as a follow up, will we see them for like a little scene at all? And Brandon says that you might get, or we might get a letter from them. Is what he's planning. It's possible he'll sneak into an interlude um, or something like that with them. But we'll have to see when he actually writes it. I like that Brandon's Sweet. gone back yeah. to when I write the sequel. Whereas <laughs> other times yeah. he's like hedging. Ah, oh, well, you know, it could be chopped. Maybe we'll see. I mean, it's a it's a big question mark, is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would I would love to like hear more about them. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I mean Sisbron is a really powerful character considering yeah. like that, and, that's a lot of investiture there. And at least left like, like know how they they'll have figured out how to get children and uh, because we know that that's probably possible uh, or it's it's possible that they can get children in return and I'd like to see that explored with them mm -hmm. at least a little. Yeah, because that's that's one of the sequel things well, about let's, like the yeah, children of return. Exactly. Let's not explore them making children. Well, yeah, Don't, no, no, but like yeah, the, yeah, the mechanics no. of a child returning, mm -hmm. that that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a, a stillborn return. Like it is really weird. There's some weird stuff mm -hmm. going on there that Brandon like deliberately <sighs> didn't explain in Warbreaker, right? Yeah, there's there's a lot. Yeah, with like returned and Vo and yeah. the royal family of Idris, the royal locks. Yeah. <sighs> A lot of crap. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I feel like needs to take place. Like I feel like we need to learn these things on Nalthus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. think they would be appropriate as like things that Vivenna says or Vasher says <laughs> on. Like, hey, Calden, I can see. Bro, I let me tell you about Vo. It's like <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. It's like what? What, what does any of this mean? I can, um. Oh yeah, Vo was a yeah, nice yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's why your religion is called Warrenism. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh no! <laughs> no, or like, I like maybe it. Maybe the heralds, like Shalash and Tal Talton, both get fixed, and they want to have kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can't have kids, just like how Return can't have kids, but Return can have kids. So obviously, that's how just, it also just turns into a relationship, uh, like therapist for <laughs> cognitive shadows. <laughs> oh yeah, he'd be real great at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like yeah. So I see that you're doing all these things. Have you considered like not doing any of those things? Because I tell, <laughs> I want to get out of here. Like, and, like, have you considered building an evil sword and killing your spouse with it? <laughs> <laughs> Look. Every problem is is a nail when you have a, a giant evil sword that destroys evil <laughs> and you just want to break all those nails with that. It's, it's your hammer, but it's a sword. Yeah. Not sure that metaphor quite. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't quite work, but you know what I meant. So, and, so the spiritual ideal of that joke really was really great. <laughs> I actually thought you were going to go somewhere with like nail the herald. No, no, no. It's the, the nail and <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just not sure the words you said had any connection with like the spiritual ideal of jokes. Well, mm -hmm. of that joke. Well, really, every joke is a reflection of the spiritual ideal of that specific joke. And the spiritual ideal is the best telling of that joke. 
Don't you have a word of Brandon to read next? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So uh, in April, we got a Dusty Wheel uh, interview mm-hmm. with Brandon. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Dusty Wheel, uh, I assume Matt uh, there, uh, mm-hmm. asked. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's mm-hmm. got to be him. Right. Um, do any other shards utilize avatars the same way autonomy does? Brandon. Uh, they have in the past. I can't say for sure if they are doing so now or not. Interesting. I'd be surprised Spicy if kind of? autonomy was the only one to ever use avatars. Mm, yeah. Like avatars. It's yeah. too useful of a mechanism for them mm-hmm. not to use. Tell, tell us yeah. how you feel about the term avatar, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't like how Brennan uses it for this sort of thing at all. I've I had made my opinion yep. known and clear <laughs> many times yep. on this podcast. <laughs> but actually, one question I have sort of after this swap is whether like we can't say whether they're doing so now or not. Like how many downsides creating an avatar has for a shard. Like if it's some sort of has some downside, so yeah. it's better to keep all your power concentrated. And if you have to face audio, maybe like it's better to have it all together. I think this is Dem- more just Brandon not yeah, wanting to he's, go he's cagey, into, but... into it. Yeah, like that. This yeah. is going to be long term things with like Trell and stuff. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And just likes trolling us in letters. <laughs> <laughs> trolling us. Boo. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, avatars are interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I I wish I wish good luck to anyone who tries to <laughs> pry some information from Brandon's ever typing hands on avatars. Uh, so this uh, next one is also from Matt at the Dusty Wheel, and it's a very long one. So it I'm not really reading long. this out. No. Um. <laughs> um. So Matt asks about how like he still has a lot of resentment about Dalinar and Oathbringer and like Dalinar's redemption arc, but it's he did some really bad things and he's not totally okay yeah, with that. That's I think that's fair. <laughs> but Dalinar is also a lot of people's favorites favorite character. So it's like how like w- what experiences does Brandon have with that? Um like Brandon like says that's a, a fair opinion to have. Everybody has everybody has characters they connect with better than others. But like there's a pretty even split between Shalon, Dalinar, and Kaladin as people's favorites. Uh Reddit skews more towards Dalinar, which I, I find <laughs> interesting. Uh, <laughs> Some people definitely do like Dalinar there, that's for sure. <laughs> Brandon yes. totally disregards all the Adonin fans. Yeah, and it's just like Dalnar did burn down a city, and how do you deal with that? Like with Star Wars, how Dal- Darth Vader blew up a planet, or a lot of things America did in World War II, which are not good. Yep, nuclear bombs are bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and so, um, gonna read the last paragraph. <laughs> Dalinar has several distinct flaws even still. He's bad at delegating, he is set in his ways, and he is a monarchist. He believes in the kind of great man theory, is what they would call it. This is what the guy who does hardcore history, Dan Garland, talks about. This idea that great men change the world. And a lot of historians say this is a kind of fallacy. Uh, Dalinar believes in that. He believes that a strong king is required for a government to work which is very at odds with our modern philosophy, and I agree with our modern philosophy. I do not agree with Dalinar. I do not agree that a king is better than a ruler with more limits. I'm glad we have a president and not a king. But Dalinar, he's all on board with this idea of great men have to change the world. And he would say, and he would say men. And we would be like, are you sure it has to be men, Dalinar? He's a person, is what I want to write him as being. And some of those these some of those things are gonna rub you the wrong way. And I hope that my characters learn and grow in lots of ways. But there are some things that are aspects of their personality that are just who, who they are. 
words. So many words. <laughs> I think that, <laughs> so that is words. very interesting. Because, like, I know when Oathbringer came out, there were totally people who were like, I'm not okay with what Dalinar did. It's like, yeah, that, I think that's totally yeah. legit. That is a legit fair reading, you know? Mm-hmm. I am especially fascinated by and interested in that last passage, the, mm-hmm. the quote-unquote great man theory, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, I kind of feel... So, on average, I feel like a, a more distributed form of government with checks and regulations and things like that, mm-hmm. much better, right? But there's a part of me that, that continues to think that if you want a truly dramatic change you need like somebody who kind of single-handedly drives that and 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 it's it's a weird Mm -hmm. paradox because maybe not a paradox maybe it's just (laughs) a situation where like most of the time if you have just a single person in charge they are not going to be driving for a better change like you're gonna get Mm -hmm. you're gonna get people being people or as as is often the case, men being men. But every now and then I feel like you're gonna you're gonna have somebody who's like, I will do this thing that is going to suck in the short term, and all the noblemen and the tradespeople and the like are not gonna like me for it, but it's gonna be so much better in five years. Mm-hmm. So I think this is getting into the fact that this is a fallacy, Uh right? Because one person can't change everything. It's like because it's like that that only works if others go along with it. It's the like the way of numbers that are like okay, this one person is pushing for this change, and then like all these other people go with it that like without those other people going with it if it was just the one person Mm -hmm. nothing would happen (laughs) yeah and we historically speaking we actually had or the ancient greeks actually had that sort of system like in war times they could elect a tyrant like that's where Mm -hmm. the word where tyrant actually comes from and yeah I think it didn't work out so well for them in the end. Like they, they also found loopholes again and sort of somebody stayed mm-hmm. around for years on end. And yeah, it's, it might seem like a good idea in, in theory or like when you, like na- naively speaking, but when you go into it, it uh, doesn't turn out so well. It, That's how it, it reminds me of how like in America, po- our political system is designed for things to not happen, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like in, in a lot of sense, yeah. it's like, yeah, there are many reasons why things do not ha- occur, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, indeed, thing, it's pretty slow getting things done, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas somewhere <laughs> like, uh, say, China, they don't have that problem. <laughs> because like, ah, oh, trillions of dollars, let's just do that. Who's going to say no? Not me, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and like hey some checks and balances can be good because hey you know if you have a good king and a good like group behind it that's great but what about the next one <laughs> well that mm-hmm. would be good and like that but most of the time that's not going to be the case yeah right right yeah. exactly uh so pro- yeah it- it's nice to <laughs> hear we- about dalinar's flaws mm-hmm. he's not perfect no nope. he has a journey he's yeah. on <laughs> but but it, I don't yeah I don't remember where or when Brandon talked about it, but he talked about um, maybe it was on a on a later live stream about how he picks like philosophies like moral philosophies for his characters to follow, uh, and specifically he talked about the contrast between Dalinar and Taravangian in in mm-hmm. their kind of like different views on what a monarch is supposed to be uh and it was uh the 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 short of it was that he goes to like real school well not schools of philosophy but like he goes to real philosophies that exist in our world and and he says well this is what fits this character of mine and this is what fits this character of mine and i will i will write these characters and i will put them in conflict and so it's 
really, really interesting to me who doesn't often know about all of these philosophies. It's really interesting to see characters in books kind of exemplify them and in in many ways teach them they teach them to like somebody like me and show yeah. that hey there are other ways of thinking um and they oftentimes have good points and it's a matter of, like i'm not gonna say that teravangel was a good person <laughs> or did good things because he's not and he didn't but there is there is an appeal to the whole hey the king is there to be the figurehead and like to take the blame and to do the things that need to, need be, to be done, done for the nation to prosper it's yeah i mean i think that's one of the great things with fantasy and stories right as you get to hear about different things than be like huh you have some points and it's <laughs> like I don't know. It's just interesting. Like when a character has experiences that are not yours and you get to learn about them and see the good and the bad. And I don't know. I love it. That's, that's why it so sort of fits with the like show don't tell because we get to see these yeah. philo- philosophies in action and like how people apply them rather than just mm-hmm. dryly reading about them on Wikipedia or whatever. And, yep. like, yeah. Okay. We totally didn't take a break to get water and stuff. So the next word nope. is Brandon. <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't do that. Uh, somebody asked Brandon, and I, and we don't have the question right now, but it was something to the effect of which ones of your characters would you be okay with, like, randomly showing up at your door in the middle of the night? Yeah. Um, and Brandon says, Axis the Collector would probably be fine. Uh, we would just have a chat. And, and I think he then thought about it for a moment and came back to it later and was like, but bad luck follows him because of the curse of kind. So maybe not. <laughs> maybe I wouldn't want to be around Axis the Collector. He's channeling the wrong kind of fortune. Channeling is not an actual term. Don't take it and put it on the week. What? We would never do something like that, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Wiki editors here on this podcast that'd be ridiculous uh at at keepers don't do that so if you forgot (laughs) uh axes does reference this curse of kind thing in his interlude and we've literally never heard about it again there have been no wobs about it ever and Brandon's just like, oh, yeah, bad luck, curse kind. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that wouldn't be a good idea. And like Brandon's just rattling it off. He knows it off the top of his head. It's not a thing that's like deep lore in his notes, right? And so I just find that interesting. Yeah. Right? Because there's lots the of things of Brandon's kind. like, I don't remember. Like, definitely implies that the curse of kind is actually a thing. A thing. It's not absolutely. just like some cultural, like, yeah. I See, believe after this, yeah. uh, we did make a Curse of Kind article on the <laughs> channeling. <laughs> the wrong uh, kind of channeling. Fortune. Fortune. Yeah, yeah, channeling. Yeah, it's God. Okay, so <laughs> we we know, or at least we suspect, that Hoyd has access to fortune, whether it is ferrochemy or some other invested yeah, art right. that gives him access to that. Yep, yep, yep. That kind of tells him like where he needs to be and when he needs to be like that's yeah. how he quote unquote knew to be in Colinar at the end of Oathringer to like be there to bond with Elokar's spren mm-hmm. so what if somehow the curse of kind is the opposite of that <laughs> it is something that puts you in the wrong place at the wrong time all the time that seems reasonable that, yeah and, and and that's what the wrong kind of fortune is. I think that's yeah. totally reasonable. I, yeah. I guess it would sort of fit with like what a chromium fairing would mm. experience when they're storing fortune. So mm. like bad luck. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's like luck, storing yeah. fortune rather than tapping it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that would be an excellent question for a future live stream. Because it's because yes. it's not like it's not a, a plot spoiler, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, is is just kind of hey Brandon, what a what a fairing storing 
fortune experience things similar to the curse of kind you know something to that effect mm-hmm. I probably would say it's similar <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all, all it says <laughs> uh, no. but man I did totally forget about the curse of kind until this mm-hmm. live stream. I, I remember yeah. that I was like oh wow I forgot about that <laughs> uh, and I think we talked in our Dawn Shard episode about whether Amians or whether all the Sia Amians had the curse of kind or not. And so we, we, mm-hmm. we discussed that, but yeah. interesting. We talked about Yasna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so go, go watch that episode, but man, we don't know Jack about the curse of kind really. <laughs> like it's <laughs> this and that, uh, this is honestly the most we've ever had about the curse of kind yeah. ever. <laughs> so, Okay, so this next question is wondering, will Kaladin and Kelsia ever meet? Will they get along if they did meet, even if they don't meet? I'm fascinated by the possibilities a Mistborn and a Windrunner could create by working together. To which Brandon said, um, whether they'd actually meet or not is a Rafo. I guess they won't meet because why should they? And I do not think they would get along very well. It takes a very special kind of person to get along <laughs> well with Kelsia. Though you will, I promise, see Windrunners and Elementers interact. Technically, you already have, because Hoyt is an Elementer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you're asking about. <laughs> so Brandon, Brandon doesn't troll us Sanderson. ever. <laughs> you will see large clashes between various different magic systems in the future of the Cosmere. Yes. And yeah, we yes. Really looking forward to that. But yeah, we mm. sort of knew that in Era 4 we'll get the Matrix interacting. And Yes. That's cool. So that just reminds me of a later live stream question, also about Kelsier and Kaladin. And so I, I put this up here uh, because it's relevant. And so Dane Brown asks, hypothetically, if Kelsier were to meet Kaladin, what would he say? Brandon says, probably don't be so hard on yourself, kid. That uh, would probably be what Kelsier says. He would do some version of, I've been there. Don't be so hard uh, on yourself. You can't fix it all. That's what my gut says. Kelsier would really like Kaladin. He's the sort of person that Kelsier just... Kelsier loves to see and recognize the people who are just innately good and trying to do good. He's drawn to that because it's not something that is natural to him, if that makes any sense. He can recognize it, though. And it's one of those things uh, that he kind of wants to preserve in the world. And he would really like Kaladin. And then Assistant Adam says... Yeah. Assistant Adam says, would Kaladin like Kelsier? Brandon, probably not. But Kelsier would probably be just fine with that. (laughs) (laughs) Which, to be honest, I completely agree because Kaladin being, uh, no, we gotta, like, do things the right and honorable way and Kelsier does Mm -hmm. not care about that at all in any way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Kelsier's more on the Teravangian side and the Teravangian Dalinar sort of thing, right? It's also a very Kelsier way to deal with somebody who suffers from depression. Don't be so hard on yourself, kid. Like, mm. totally disregarding the problems and just, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's also true, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get over it. <laughs> so I think these are believable interactions, which mm-hmm. these these are always nice to hear because I I remember when Brandon was asked, like, would Hoyt and Kelsier like each other? And Brandon was like, no, they do not get along at all. He like had a, um, had a response. And then it's like in Secret History, we saw that. I think we'll see mm-hmm. yeah, this with Calden, but Yeah, that was before Secret History. Mm-hmm. So this uh, next question is from Michael Walton. Uh, which of the villains from your books would you <laughs> vote for for as president of the United States? <laughs> Brandon. Um... Hraithan probably. Hraithan is probably your best shot at someone who, at the end of the day, you would be okay with them having been president. Do not let Teravangian anywhere near the presidency. <laughs> Lord Ruler, better than Ta- Teravangian, <laughs> still a pretty bad choice. Let's just go with that. Hraithan. Yeah. Uh, well, as we talked about with uh, Teravangians, like, I need to take the burdens of the people on myself. And uh, then we're going to backslide this place to an autocracy <laughs> <laughs> real hard. It's like, that's what he'd do. So, yeah, that's, it is it is concerning that 
the Frost Chick is a better choice than the Revenge mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. 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 Rashak eventually tried, I guess. It, 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 so I, I guess I, I eventually, well, kind of, maybe. Kind of. Not really, actually. Oh. Um, I, I guess that the thing that is maybe not bothering me, but concerning me about this is that, like, Kerbranth is actually a pretty nice city to live in. <laughs> Like because he needs to make it if, non-threatening. If, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not a beggar, if you're not a beggar, like if you have a family, you're you're fine. Um, and if you don't suffer from some uh, terminal illness, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> except for those things, if, if, it's pretty great. It doesn't even have to be terminal. Yeah. It's, all, it's so, so great. You, except for if all you're the fine, you're suffering. fine. <laughs> Mm. I mean, yeah, um, it is a nice place to live because you're yeah, sheltered from the storm as well, pretty well. And but like, I still wouldn't want to live there. No, <laughs> with our knowledge, yeah. No. yeah. I think it's Teravangian wanted Kerbranth to be non-threatening to the world. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. exactly. And so it's like, oh yeah, it's like that, like nice place to live, like, like not really remarkable in any way. Yeah, exactly. And we already um, see, like with the with the lesson, that even the like the it isn't as nice as it seems because there are right uh, criminals and and uh, so the guards don't really take care of it, and yeah. so she's always garbage. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I mean it is. I I am more than a little naive about many things, so. It is probably not shocking that I see Teravengian as kind of a little bit in the same boat as Amram, right? So, like, I, I oh, see yeah. Teravengian as kind of the man he presents himself to be to Dalinar. Like, somebody who who doesn't enjoy the killing and the making of the suffering of the others, right? But genuinely thinks that this is the best way to... yeah. Oh, I, I think save humankind. It's exactly that sort of thing. That's like, oh man, Amaram. Like, yeah, yeah, I do need to take these shards for the good of everything. And it's like, <laughs> ah, I'll kill a few people. And Teravangian also is like, no, a, a ruler needs to do what needs to be done, and I will take the suffering. I think that's exactly the same thing, right? Because and like the contrast with Dalinar is that like Dalinar is choosing the honorable path. Right, the mm-hmm. path of honor and the path of journey before destination. Whereas yeah. these uh, the opponents that Dalnar is facing are making the opposite choice. Right? Yeah, um, I, I guess I guess I'm beginning to realize that if I were in Stormlight, I would be a villain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why your radiant quiz scores were so low. <laughs> <laughs> but you, the second time you took it, you did better. But you know, and you were the most negative bondsmith, right? So it also like you're not uh, well I, no no I, I don't know if I was I was I was okay. negative on light weaving and wheel shaping. Mm. Okay. okay. No freedom. Argent <laughs> rules everything. <laughs> <laughs> no freedom. Speaking of villains, uh, do this next one, Argent. Uh speaking of villains, I'm doing the next one as soon as I scroll <laughs> down to it. Yep. Um the question reads, what would happen if Sadius Dilaf, the Lord Ruler, Ruin, and Rays got together for a drink? Would they talk civilly or fight? Uh, Bran says, the standout there is Dilaf. <laughs> Dilaf just does not get along with people. What? No ever. way. Really. <laughs> I feel like the others could have a, a really good conversation, and the Lord Ruler would eventually storm out, insisting he doesn't belong in this conversation. Which is true, by the way. Um, <laughs> the rest of them depends on when you get ruined. The <laughs> Rays and Sadius get along really well. That's a team up you don't want. We really are having a lot of words of Brandon about like Dalinar, the honorable choice versus like mm-hmm. Sadius, Amaram, like all these people. It's like, oh, they, <laughs> this this podcast has a good theme. We didn't plan it at all. Like they went in order, really. But mm-hmm. it's amusing. I, I guess people in 2020 are either thinking about villains or they're thinking about Stormlight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that that makes and, sense. Race and uh, Race mm-hmm. and Sadius getting along really well. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and and having having seen Rashek post to death, he's the kind <laughs> to just yeah, I'm out no out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the Lord Ruler ever really got into situations where it's like, hmm, I don't want to be in this situation. Can I just kill everyone and get out of it? It's like he he's definitely seems like that type of person where if he doesn't want to be there, he's not going to be there in that situation. Yeah, you know. Yep. It's like no. <laughs> Screw this. <laughs> so, and uh, having spoken of Sadias and Amaram just before this one, we have another one concerning them. Hey. Alexander asks, <laughs> who would win in a fight, Sadias or Amaram? And Brendan says that, uh, yeah, I'm going to say Sadias at his prime. And this is because Sadias at his prime was more aware of his weaknesses than Amaram was, if that makes sense. And Sadius, which it does make sense. Yeah. And Sadius was more aware of his strengths and his weaknesses. Where Sadius runs into problems is Sadius did not have the help and the sort of beginnings of cosmic awareness that Amaram had. Amaram had access to way more resources and way more. He was in a better position than Sadius was because of the allies and friends that he had. Sadius's vision was too myopic in the series, while Amaram's vision was bigger, but he himself did not have quite the capacity. Which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that, like, Sadias, like, it's cool to see, like, I, we knew that Sadias wasn't really Cosmere aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, that Amarim was, and that, uh, that we knew, but, and that it wouldn't have helped him at all is, is cool because, like, they are really. Yeah, I, I don't know. Nah. I, okay. I would have to get into it. <laughs> I know, there's, there's a lot of wobs here. Like, mm, Rhythm of War stuff, can't talk yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Amram, totally not aware of his weaknesses. Whereas Sadius is that calculating. Like, he, oh yeah, he knows yeah. what he's good at and what he's bad at, yeah. but doesn't have those yeah. sorts of resources, right? Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I guess it depends on what kind of fight we're talking about. Mm -hmm. right? Are they just dueling? Are they like army versus army? And I mean, uh, Sadius with Amarim because before Amarim got his shards is <laughs> a lot clearer because Sadius has his shard fit already. Yeah. But okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's like all things being considered equal. Mm -hmm. so like yeah. If they were both in shards, both in their prime, yeah. Sadius would be. Yeah. 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 I agree. Which is which is interesting. Cool. Well, that was that was some fun thematic ending uh, for <laughs> this WAB episode. We still got a bunch more, so we will have more uh, for you next time. But right now, it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That? Cosmere character! Call! Amaram. Amaram. <laughs> Odium. Sadius. Dilof. Okay, you've got your, you've used your five uh, guesses. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we really need more female villains, don't we? It's like Shanna Lariel, <laughs> who's a villain for like three chapters or whatever. I hope that I like it set up probably uh, properly in Rhythm of War. Find out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Welcome to Who's That Cosmic Character, the game where you send five clues in a character to WTCC at 17shard.com, and we will maybe eventually read them. There's a lot in there, but uh, <laughs> we got a lot of them, and uh, we. Read aloud the clues, and these guys need to guess who's that Cosmic character. Clue one. This character survived the Catacendra. Is it Marsh? No, it's not Marsh. But uh, Catacendra is the event that uh, yeah. Harmony's remaking of the world, in case you forgot the listeners. The end of the ash. ash. <laughs> end of ash. There's no more ash on schedule. Nope. Even if you burn stuff, there's no ash. No ash. Yeah. yeah. No. Harmony's like, no, no ash. ash. That's my edict. Stop no ash. Guy. To your own path. But if you make ash, you're dead to me. 
I'm going to guess Mardra, which is Ham's wife, I Ooh, think. Ooh, good guess, well, but it's not it, that. Yeah, it was perfect. the answer a while back. Mm. <laughs> right, so. it was. Mm. No, it's not her. Um, God, what was her name? Beldre? Like Spook's crush lady <laughs> from the third book? <laughs> <laughs> One of Spook's presumably many relationships no it's not her. well there's like the, the, the first one the first the one first one yeah <laughs> yeah he did live a long time clue two this character has been in contact with seizad tensoon no it's not Tetsu. because they've literally been in contact right? <laughs> a a uh, breeze not breeze Hoid? It is Hoid. <laughs> oh. Uh, the other clues are this character has interacted with Kelsier. This character is a Mistborn. And then the last clue is this character is not from Skadriel. Mm -hmm. Very I, nice. I, I thought that maybe the Kata Sandra was misleading. Like, oh, we're going to go to Skadriel characters. But then I still I went mean, Hoid did so. survive it. So that, that, yeah. that, that, that yeah, does make but... sense. I mean, I doubt he's that was, that was an interesting. It was an interesting way to do a Hoid mm -hmm. character in here. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, he, he has to have been on planet because he would have had to get yeah. to the well. Which well, the from in 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 the traveler, I think he steps out of schedule like immediately after uh, Harmony's ascension. I think. Mm hmm. Yes, but that's no longer quite canon, so... Eh, it's canon enough for this. This next one is sent by Evan Riker. Clue one, this Hello. character enters into conflict with a main character. <laughs> oh boy, that narrows it down. Sean Ilario. <laughs> it's not Sean. <laughs> uh, Sadius. Nope. Uh, I was gonna say the dead one, but that also doesn't clarify. No, <laughs> Emerim. It's not Emerim. <laughs> Love it. I already guessed Sadius. Clue two. Mm. We're bringing it back. This character is male. <laughs> oh. Um. Zane. Ooh, no, it's not Zane. I'm not gonna lie. I was about to guess Zane. Seth. It's not Seth. Okay. All right, we're going to the to the z -z names. <laughs> um. oh, I'm actually just trying to come up with the names of the people uh, of one of the people I actually want to guess, but can't come up. With them. So, <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling. Um, Moash. It's not Moash. Clue three. This character is an Elomancer. Miles? It's not Miles. The Marsh. It's not Marsh. Hmm. I've always said it the Gooder. Straff. It's not Straff. Okay. It's not Straff. All right. Clue four. This character is a minion. What's his name? Bloody Tan. It's not Bloody Tan. What you got, Paleo? It, it's uh, is it okay if I say the description? Yeah, that's fine. Yes, okay. It's a colorless blooded leecher guy. On the, the that they fight on the trainer, or uh, he's one of the minions of Miles. Uh, I think. Let me just check here. No, it is not that character. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it Mr. Suit? It is not Mr. Suit. Dang it. <laughs> All right, clue five. This character is killed with metal. There's also a bonus clue, so. <laughs> we will probably need that. I think we'll, you'll probably yeah. need that. Yeah. Do you want the bonus clue, or do you want to guess no, first? No, we need okay. to do clue right. five first. All right. Give us the clues while we think. All right. Yeah. Entered conflict with a main character. Is male. Is an Alamancer is a minion and is killed with metal is it the guy from bands of mourning who uses the primer cube against wax no it is not that person 
Okay. I'm trying to think of minions in era one, but see, minion is a is a really weird clue. I'm trying to remember a character name, and I keep and and like <laughs> the name that comes to my head is Galadon, and I'm like, no, no, stop thinking about <laughs> Galadon. Just give me the come on, brain. I'm going to pass because okay. I'm not going to come up with it. I am going to guess. Ellen. It's not Ellen. All right. The bonus clue is this character was shot. That's how they were killed with metal. I'd assumed that much. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where my brain went. I don't know. I don't know. Wax shoots a lot of people. That's true. Yeah, exactly. That is true. And if it wasn't for he was, some, uh, they were male. I'd have gone with Pan, but I, that's also yeah. what my thought. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know minions. Yeah, that's what is a minion. <laughs> oh, I can give you a second bonus clue. Would you like okay. a second bonus clue? Uh, yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> this character is unnamed, and we just know them by a pseudonym. Yeah, that's not helping uh, that much. Over. Is it the is it the scientist that the set has? I don't know no. whether he's killed it or not. Okay. No, we have the name for him. I, yeah, I wasn't sure whether he only had like one of these sequence and suit uh, mm. pseudonyms or whether. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's been like a million years since I read the two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to guess Top Hat. I don't know. No. Uh, I'm trying it's... to think of like something that would like, like would be used in description for to dis <laughs> distinguish. Yeah. I don't know. This, uh, it's referring to one of the vanishers named Paul. Okay. Yeah, I, oh, I thought God. it might be. I was thinking there was like a push and a pull. Yeah, there like, is. There is. I couldn't remember if they were actually in the book or if they were just from the Mistborn Adventure game? Ah, uh, no, they're, they're actual characters. They die in L.O. Of Lock. Okay. Lax fights them. Okay. Okay. I, 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 was, I was thinking it might be one of the Vanishers because they're yeah. like half the casualties that and Wax can you tell me what the, the novel. Colors, colors Blooded Dude was called? I don't know, actually. Okay. I don't remember okay. that person's name. I just had to check if Paul was Colors Blooded or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's nothing here that mentions that, so. But like, oh, yeah, it was like... I was thinking about push and pull, but I didn't mm. think they were actually real. No, no, no. They're, they're, they are real. It's Tarson. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was, the, he was the pewter. He was pewter. Not, yeah. But there was somebody who was a leecher. Uh, well, yeah, there, so there's a leecher at the end of Shadows of Self. Um, there, there's like a leecher and somebody else in a, um, in a carriage, I think. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Morassi goes there and is like, yo, guys, stop. Don't do that. Hm. Yeah. Might be what I'm... Oh, no, I wasn't there. Uh, uh. On the train ride to New Seren, there was a leecher, I think. And that is also when they used the Primer Cube. Yeah, that, that's the guy yeah. I was thinking of. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So just... Okay. How many people will Wax kill <laughs> in Lost Metal? We'll find out. <laughs> Eventually. The lost metal is just the, the pieces of bullets lost in people's bodies. You know, you know what the lost <laughs> metal is? It's the aluminum shrapnel that killed Aiden Elsie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spiritual oh, no. aluminum shrapnel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Follow us on SamTeachShard.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. Uh, join us on Discord. Chat about stuff. Uh, if you like us and want to support our stuff, you can support us on Patreon. Uh, and we will be back next time with more words of Brandon. Bye. Bye. Dance with us on TikTok. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Bye. Don't do not dance with us on TikTok. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.